I received my Nikon Z8 on Friday, May 26th, and in the first week shot a family barbecue using the 70 to 200 2.8. By the way, I shot it 20 frames a second in RAW. I also shot an event for one of the hospitals I do work for using the 24 to 70 2.8 with the SB910. And I also went to the Edwin Foresight Wildlife Refuge in New Jersey, not far from Atlantic City. And the camera performed great for everything. But in this video, I want to mainly talk about my experience with the camera in general and at the Wildlife Refuge specifically. So I got there on a weekday morning just after sunrise and got to work. I had the camera set for auto ISO and use manual exposure control. So I picked the shutter speed, uh, usually 2,000th or 3,200th of a second, and an aperture ranging from 5.6 to 8. And um, so the way it works, it's actually auto exposure control because the meter will pick the appropriate ISO. And this shot of the egret was actually at 12,800. And of course, I applied some noise reduction in Lightroom. My lens was the 70 to 200 2.8 with the two time teleconverter. And that combination was used for all the pictures you will see at the Wildlife Refuge. I've used this combination before and very pleased with the results but I never got such a high percentage of in-focus pictures. Now these photos here of the baby Canada geese were shot at 12,800 ISO, an aperture of 5.6, which was the widest aperture with the, this combination I was using, and a shutter speed of 1 1,600th of a second. Now I also, in Lightroom, used the Enhanced Noise Reduction, which is, I believe it's called Denoise, and it worked beautifully. It takes about a minute per image. So it's a new thing recently available in Lightroom. Now, I also want to talk about one issue I had, not with the camera, but with the lens. Many Nikon Z lenses have a programmable ring close to the lens mount. In this picture, I have put a yellow box around it. And I had that set for exposure compensation. Now, it could be set for either exposure compensation, aperture, or ISO. The problem is you can accidentally turn it. Now, I handheld all the images at the Wildlife Refuge. If it was on a monopod or a tripod, I don't think it would have been a problem. But I accidentally turned it to give me... What I didn't want was um, minus exposure compensation. So some of these images and uh, this gull in flight, it was actually set for one and two thirds under exposure. So I had to, in Lightroom, of course, reverse that and lighten the image quite a bit. Of course, that increased the noise. Now in the future, I will have that ring program for none. So it won't affect anything. It can be programmed that way. So it just will, turning it will do nothing. I had the camera set for subject detection animal and it picked up this bird at a great distance. He was just standing on the road. Uh, I continued to shoot and in this next image I cropped it in uh, extensively. And I think another thing I would do in the future is shoot at in DX. That would give me a bigger image in the viewfinder. And most of these images were cropped in order to bring them in closer, bring the bird in closer. So if I shoot in DX, then I won't have to do as much work after the fact in post. Now, a lot of these were, were, were cropped, as you can see, but it maintained focus on this bird's eyes. It, it was flying right towards me. I never got bird in flight images like this before using a D500 with a 300 millimeter F4 
or using the Z6 or Z7, never anything like this. Another thing about setting the DX crop, with DX, with the Z cameras, with the mirrorless cameras, it fills the frame with the old DSLRs, if you set it for DX crop, for example, the DA10, it masks the viewfinder. Another thing I like with the um, Z8 is you have four memory banks, A, B, C, and D, which you can rename. So you set up the camera the way you like it for a specific type of photography. I have it set for portrait, event, action, and just general photography. Okay, when shooting at the wildlife refuge, I have the camera set up for memory bank C. Okay, we're gonna select C and I named it action. For birds, in flight, sports, whatever. Okay, now let's get back to shooting. Okay, and you can see I am using wide area, wide focus area C1, which I have set for this rectangle that you can see here. And what's going to happen is the camera is going to look for anything within that box that is an animal and will focus on the eyes. I don't know if you can see that right up here, it's set for animal, which is a symbol of a cat. Now I could change the position of that just by using the joystick. Okay, move it around. Could also use the pad here to move it around. But if I wanted to change the size of it, I just press the button on the front of the camera, the AF button on the front of the, here is the AF button on the front. So by pressing that, by holding that in and pressing the pad or the joystick, I could change the size of it. Make it smaller and I could go down as small as one AF point okay which would be about the same size as if you had picked single point autofocus so that works real good at narrowing the view of the autofocus sensor to place it over a face or a bird or uh, a cat if there were multiple birds in the frame, you could just position it over the one that you wanted to focus on and then the camera will pick out the face and if it's close enough, even the eye. It will be able to distinguish a bird at a great distance. And even if the bird temporarily flies out of the box, it's still going to try to find the head and the eye. So it works really well, and it's great that you could change the size of that box from one focus point to almost the entire screen. Now, this sequence you see here was this bird picked up a crab, and I started following it from a great distance. I didn't even realize at the time that it had a crab. Now, some of these images were cropped, but this whole sequence with this crab... Uh, was about 220 images over the, a period of time of about 11 seconds, shooting at 20 frames a second. And uh, I picked out 24 images you see here. Now, there was some foliage in the foreground here, but the camera maintained focus on the bird, specifically on the head of the bird and sometimes the eye if it wasn't obscured by the crab as it as it is in some of these images and again i cropped in on some of these but i was really impressed with how well this worked now 20 frames a second in five seconds is 100 pictures so at the wildlife refuge i always shot at 20 frames a second i ended up with 4100 pictures so it took me a long time to go through them. And uh, yeah, it's great that it'll do 20 frames. It'll actually do 30, 60, or 120 frames in JPEG. But uh, 20 frames in RAW for me is more than enough. And uh, that means you're going to spend a lot of time on that computer when you get home. 
Here's a red-winged blackbird that was just sitting in the tree. And this, I believe, is an osprey, a lot of osprey down at the uh, Brigantine Wildlife Preserve. Here's another osprey. Again, the focus was right on his eye. Now, here's another long sequence. This osprey had a bird, uh, excuse me, a fish in its mouth. And he was just flying along. And I just kept that box, that red box on him. And the camera, for the most part, picked out his head and the eye. Focus was the sharpest point for most of these images excuse me, for most of these images, was on the eye. This was about a five-second burst. And I, by the way, I never filled up the buffer. The buffer, I believe, at 20 frames a second in RAW with a fast card, with the CF Express card, fast as CF Express cards, uh, the buffer is like a 1,000 images. So you're, you know, you're not going to fill it up. Now, some of these were underexposed, of course, because I accidentally turned that ring. I will make sure not to have that ring programmed to do nothing in the future. Like I said, I don't think it would be a problem if you were on a tripod because you wouldn't accidentally turn that ring because it's so close to the lens mount. But um, it seemed like a nice thing to have, but it, it really didn't work out because I underexposed so many images. And of course, that's even more work in Lightroom to lighten them. Now, while I did have negative exposure compensation dialed in accidentally, I also think the matrix metering saw so much of the sky. And this is one that was not compensated for. I didn't do anything in Lightroom to this image. And you can see how dark it is. I think if I had it set for DX, the bird would have filled more of the frame. And per perhaps the matrix metering would have been a little more accurate. But uh, I don't know. We'll have to just experiment with that in the future. Now, this group of Canada geese were just marching along. Uh, I was out of my car at this point. A lot of these images, by the way, I was shooting from the car. And you could see that red-winged blackbird in the right. I didn't even notice it when the picture was shot. A lot of times that happens. That's one of the joys of photography is sometimes you get something that's totally unexpected. Now this bird here was just sitting on that pipe and this is, I just pulled over. I shot this through the open window and then I cropped the next image in tight and that's one of the advantages of having a 45 megapixel camera is that you could crop in real tight. Now, this next shot here of this mute swan, I believe, was at an ISO of 500, 7.1 at one four thousandth of a second. And I then got out of my car, took a walk on one of the trails. There's many trails at the wildlife refuge and uh, got a shot of these flowers. And then there was a pond and I'm walking to the edge of the pond and I noticed these two birds. And... I got two quick shots off and they got spooked and took off. And I just kept the box, the rectangular box on them and the camera focused on their eyes. I just held the shutter release down and fired away. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I use for wildlife for this type of action back button focus. So the back button is used to focus. And of course, I used the shutter release to release the shutter. And uh, it worked out good. And it didn't lose them even when they got up high with the trees behind the camera, still focused on the birds and not the background. Another thing I like about this camera is that you could set the rear LCD for vertical. And Put the camera down low and that's how I was able to get this shot of my cousin's granddaughter. And so here's a few more shots from the barbecue and also from that event. But I am really impressed with this camera. I still have a lot to learn. There's so many features. There's so many programmable buttons. You can do a lot. But for the first week, I'm very happy I shot almost 6,000 total pictures, and I'll be shooting a lot more, so look for additional videos in the future. 
And I normally come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time.